3, 2, 1, here we go. Magnus Carlsen is one of the best chess players in the world. He is the best. He is able to take apart the Slav defense. Let me scroll all the way to the end to spoil it a little bit for you, to show you a beautiful sacrificial attack. In this position, white has a brilliant way to crash through in style. If I reverse this position, then I'm going to explain every single step how we got to this position here. White has so much space. Bishop pair, and this was a Slav defense. So why am I bringing Magnus Carlsen in to mention in this video? Because he also is able to take apart the Slav, which I will show you at the very end. Our first question must be, well, what is this video all about? You are going to learn how to play against the Slav defense, one of the best defenses there is. And you're going to witness a very smooth sacrificial attacking display. We have the players in the top and the bottom right corners. We have Vilimir Ivic from Serbia and from Cuba we have Elia Miranda. Both are grandmasters. You can see their ratings 25.99 and 25.12. Here we go. So firstly what is the Slav defense? d4, d5, c4 and now c6. White now plays knight f3. And then e3, the bishop can now protect the pawn on c4. This is the point of the Slav. When the bishop comes out early, the b7 pawn can be weak, so white attacks it very soon. White can attack it with queen b3. Now, the pawn chain set up in this way, it means you can now attack this bishop. And that's exactly what Magnus Carlsen did in another video, which I will show you very soon. Knight h4, you hit the bishop. If you put the bishop here then you give white a chance to go a little bit wrong you might take but that's actually a terrible move because after this black now has g5 and then you trap white's knight so this does not happen at the highest level f3 you kick the bishop away it drops back and now bishop d2 white is getting ready for what well let's have a look the bishop comes off this is one reason why white plays in this fashion you get the bishop pair very quickly the position can open up and then it's just good attacking chances. Grab the bishop pair because black's bishop was a fantastic piece anyway. White's knight is doing nothing and now queen c2. Queen b3 is possible but Vilimir Ivic, top player from Serbia, chose queen c2. Why? Because he just wants to castle. So why is this really good for white? Because the position can open up and then the bishop pair will be very good. Why is this good for black? Look at the black pawns, they are all on white squares. So it's a very solid setup, quite a healthy way to play, but it's a bit too passive for me. So I'm really glad I found this game from the Olympiad 2024 to see how he crushed him. B5 is possible. B5 is played, but not the best move. One option is actually to open it up a little bit, even though it does bring the bishop in the game. B5, bishop e2, and now knight d7. Mm, the knights are also in the game, and pawn break coming up, because you've got to get your knights in the game. However, I still like white's position, because e4, d5 is possible, and king b1, as shown by the green arrows, and the bishop can actually come out slowly, as shown by the blue arrow. Let's go back a little bit here. However, this move actually looks okay, because one option you are not going to take, because now, if you do this, then a takes b5, the rook is in the game. So this move is very, very forcing. White now goes c5, which kind of looks, mm, it looks not the best because in a block position, the knights are better, but a pawn break is coming up. So white's position opens up anyway for the bishops. So already this is a fantastic looking position for, mm, for white. Pawn breaks also for black, but a bit too slow. G4, you get space. You're not going to go g5 because the knight can sit on h5. h4, get more space, and now king b1, normal move, and then the knight can rotate. Here's a cool moment, bishop to e1. Putting it on g3, so then attacking the queen on c7. Cool move coming up. Take, take, the knight now goes to e6, and now's your chance. You can pause the video, I'll give you guys five seconds. Can you see a really cool move for white to control the g3 square? You guys have five, have five seconds. I'll put my hand to the camera. So that is my signal. Okay, good. So here, the move is knight to e2. So then the bishop can come to g3 and then you over defend your d4 pawn with bishop g3. 
is just such a powerful position because you control so many dark squares look at the black pieces they're all clustered up this is not looking good hit the queen it drops back you are attacking h4 now but it doesn't matter why so much space it doesn't matter if you give up that pawn by the way you can't do this because you actually just lose the pawn for free you do not want that so really white just ignored it bishop g2 this is one reason i wanted to go through this game because from this moment every single move white now plays is just so powerful f4 you can't play bishop takes bishop because you lose the rook so black defends the bishop and now you hit the knight it moves bishop d6 another fantastic move very powerful moves it doesn't even feel like white is down a pawn that's the cool thing look at the bishops compare the bishops white's bishop is way too strong the bishop for black is just offside it's like he's down a piece really knight c3 cool move leading to a beautiful sacrifice b4 you're just encouraging the sacrifice a better move is actually king f7 just to get out of the way i'm not going to show that line because mm, it kind of ruins it because it's almost the same b4 hit the knight does it have to move no you throw in a check first king f7 and now you crash through you guys have five seconds i'll hold up my hand you can pause the video now can you see the next two or three moves for white to crash through five seconds Knight takes d5, game over. After this, if the black knight takes, then queen e6 is actually mate. If we go back, if you take the other way, then you want to deflect. You want to deflect with bishop d5, check, hit, and then it is mate anyway. Easy deflection puzzle. So in this moment, you cannot take, and if you can't take, you're just busted. Rook e8 played. Now you have unpinned yourself, but too little, too late. The black rook has come in again, but, 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 but. It just encourages queen c4 and game over. He actually resigned, and the reason is what we showed before. Take, check, and then that is actually mate. You have to block with a rook, and it is still mate. All squares covered. Absolutely crushing attacking game. And here, if you try to run away with the king then it doesn't matter because you're going to be down so much material. You can actually take the knight with check and then take a rook as well. Discover check from the queen, move the king and then take the rook, or even better, because I wanted to show this variation, that is a cool check. That is double checkmate, by the way. Double checkmate from bishop, knight, all squares covered. And if we go back, you want to go to the h-file, doesn't matter. Knight g6 is a class move. The reason is, it's not rook takes bishop which i drew it's actually knight takes and then it's game over black has no good move you can just move the knight out of the way and then here take take and it is mate anyway good fantastic crushing game against the slav defense here we go top left corner magnus carlson white masterclass new video i released a few days ago it is growing fast 220 views very similar to this game Magnus Carlsen completely outclasses his opponent. Bottom left corner, Magnus Carlsen mastery over Alireza Farouja's King's Indian. Also a new video released a few days ago, 275 views. That is also growing. If you don't prefer a Magnus Carlsen video, then top right corner is actually me beating the Slav defense in a blitz game on chess 24 from four years ago. Very instructive. I also used a bishop pair. I also used a bishop pair, just like in this game, to crush my opponent. Thank you so much for watching. Which video will you pick? One, two or three?